All right, everybody, welcome to Sports Beat Special Edition College Football Preview. Last week it was BYU. Today it's all about the Aggies. Utah State coming off its best season 11 and 2 a year ago and a Potato Bowl win over Toledo. But Gary Anderson now gone to Wisconsin. Matt Wells has his first head coaching job at any level, but back is quarterback Chucky Keaton and most of the defensive studs back as well. And Utah State is making the move from the WAC to the Mountain West Conference. However, even with the move to the Mountain West, Utah State getting a lot of respect. Ags picked to finish second behind Boise State in a Mountain Division. Utah State received one first place vote compared to the Broncos 40 first place votes. But for a newcomer to the Mountain West, Aggies pretty happy with all that love and respect they're getting. If I had one word to say what they are, it's tough. The third Aggie sack of the night. He's pressured, sack! That but is getting rocked. They're tough physically, they're tough schematically, and they're confident and they have some momentum. So I look for them to be right in the middle of this thing. I think Utah State's excellent. I mean, I think they're going to be one of the top teams in our league uh, from what they've done in the past to who they got coming back. Yeah, they're loaded and with talent. And uh, I mean, Gary did a phenomenal job. You know, I know when you lose a coach that's real successful, everybody's like, uh-oh. Well, not, not so much because the guy that's taking it over knows what worked and he can put his own spin on it and add some new energy. You know, no question, a top 20 football program, and this year uh, probably should have an even stronger team this season, too. This one is blocked into the end zone. Utah State will recover. You know, we've had a few conversations. You know, he's already agreed that, you know, when Boise comes to town, they won't play all the good players. They're going to rest them up for the next play, the next team. Yeah. That's what we're in negotiations for that. For some reason, that. I don't think that's going to happen. All right, Jeremiah Jensen here now, and you were at the Aggies at Mountain yeah. West uh, Media Day in Las Vegas. Of course, they're getting a lot of love and respect, deservedly so, but are you surprised at how much they're getting from the coaches from the Mountain I'm, West? I'm not surprised because of the quarterback that is returning. Good point. They really respect him. If you enjoyed the Utah State offense last year, expect more of the same. Matt Wells moves from offensive coordinator and provides continuity and eight starters returning, including Chucky Keaton. He's on the Heisman Trophy watch list after a record-setting season. Is he an NFL guy? No question. And he's going to go the distance. Spicy way to the end zone. Can you believe that? Touchdown, Utah State. Chucky Keaton set single season school records in touchdown passes, passing yards, total offense, and completion percentage. Now he must prove he can put up those type of numbers against a tough schedule and a better conference. Where'd he come from? Where'd he come from? Chucky Keaton, the true freshman. And he's taken uh, the nation uh, by surprise a little bit. He's a guy that I think really can, can bring a lot to this league, to this conference. Uh, he's fun to watch. If you look at some of the quarterbacks in this conference, and it's a pretty impressive list. Where does he rank in your mind in that list? Oh, I, I don't know. I wouldn't trade him for any other ones. Um, but I'm biased too. The Aggies return all five starters on the offensive line, led by first team preseason all conference center Tyler Larson. They'll, they'll keep me safe this year, and uh, they're going to open up a lot of big holes for, uh, for Joe Hill and uh, the rest of the running backs. Joe Hill leads a deep group at running back, and Travis Reynolds leads the receivers, where some new talent will need to step in and step up. What are your expectations for this offense? Oh, I think that we, um, you know, find our identity. You know, we're, we do have a lot of linemen back. We've got a tight end back that's played for three years. You know, Travis Reynolds at receivers played quite a bit. And, and of course, number 16. But we've got to come up with our identity and who we are. And um, we want to be explosive. And we want to play fast. And we're going to do those things. But are we going to do them a little bit different than we did them last year? Maybe so. Wells' move from offensive coordinator to head coach provides familiarity and continuity which should allow this offense to pick up where it left off. Here's a fake handoff, a rollout by Keaton. He's still got the ball. Chucky turns, scores, touchdown. You're going to see something very similar to last year, but you're just going to see some new faces. That's all it is. And with those new faces, is going to be a little bit a little bit of a flare from each thing, from each person, and uh, it's it's going to be it's going to be very exciting. I look forward to seeing it uh, in training camp and having it roll over until our first game until uh, against Utah. Keaton's going to keep it. Has a first down to the 20. Keaton to the free touchdown. 
touchdown. It's something special that's really about to happen, and uh, it's, it's one of those things that on this team you can just kind of feel the vibe, and uh, everyone's buying into it. Now, Utah State had 72 explosive plays last year. That's plays over 20 yards. The ability of the offense to maintain that explosiveness against a more difficult schedule may determine the level of their success. Rock. All right, Jeremiah, thank you. Al Lewis, radio voice of the Aggies, joining us now, and thanks for uh, making the trip from Logan. Uh, the Aggie bandwagon has a lot of people on board right now. It's good to be wearing the Aggie blue right now. Yeah, I got mine on today. We've been looking forward to this yeah. for a long time to have this in football. Yeah, now before we break down the offense, talk more about what Jeremiah talked about. It was announced earlier this week that instead of playing BYU twice in Provo, then, you know, a two for one coming back to Logan, now they will play a home and home series beginning, you know, this year in Logan. Two years in Logan and then um, the 14 and 16 in Provo. That's big for the Aggies. You guys have been waiting for that. Well, it obviously means you have another great opponent at home that's not on your conference schedule that's a guaranteed big game. And then to have then it get to the end of the season, be a real rivalry game to replace the Utah BYU game will be great too. Yeah. Now, before you get to the BYU game this year, okay. you're five weeks away from the opener at Utah. Now, last year's went home against the Utes really kind of catapulted you guys into that record breaking season. It was an amazing win for Utah State to have a chance to do that finally to Utah and to get them and, and to win the game like they did yeah. at the end to make the play defensively, which kind of spelled this, uh, the tale. The defense was really great last year, especially against team scoring. Knowing that you had a lead, you lost it, and you came back yeah. in pressure situation, had to do tons for confidence. Oh, it was, it was great. And again, it was Keaton and Kerwin Williams that made big plays, and Keaton's back again, and we're looking forward to that. All right, after the huge, check out the rest of the schedule. Then you go to Air Force. You're on the road. Uh, back to back Weber State and then you go to USC and then two weeks later you have BYU and Boise State back to back home games that's a fun first seven weeks of this season to have BYU and Boise State back to back on night games national TV will be really really big for Logan for sure toughest schedule the Aggies have had in a long time well you'd have to say it's the best ever yeah. because of the conference and then the non-conference to have USC and yeah. BYU and Utah in there yeah, that's absolutely. great absolutely all right now to this year's team uh, for having a new head coach usually people say uh oh I'm kind of nervous but with Matt Wells I don't sense one ounce of concern in Logan well there's never been a transition coach at Utah State in a long long time obviously True. so that makes a big difference and so you get that and you had everybody who saw what Matt did with the offense he's learned it uh, from Gary he kept a lot of Gary's staff that didn't go to Wisconsin so it, it, there should be a really good transition of course Chucky e. Keaton a lot of reason while everybody's uh, you know pretty uh, optimistic about this year great numbers a year ago with Wells moving up to head coach new offensive coordinator Kevin McGiven uh, coming in how is Chucky and, and Coach McGiven meshing? Well, I think they've meshed well, and I think Matt uh, Wells is still involved in that. I think offensively he'd still be involved uh, some, but uh, McGiven already has been through this system because he was there before Matt Wells was the offensive coordinator, so I really think that that's been good, and, and I think that will be a great situation for Chucky to have a guy like uh, Kevin McGiven. Yeah, he's had good numbers everywhere he's gone, Montana State, Weaver State, and uh, Memphis. Curran Williams is gone now. Uh, junior Joe Hill, is he the next running back to stay in line? Well, last year, Kerwin waited his term behind uh, Robert Turbin, and I think Joe Hill last year, he only, what, he scored seven touchdowns and only touched the ball about 56 times. That's yeah, a pretty good ratio. Exactly. Uh, quickly, with uh, the new schedule and going to the Mountain West Conference, will we see the same kind of explosiveness from this Aggie offense? Well, I think there, it's there, and again, the major deal will be if they can come up with some big play wide receivers, and I think Travis Reynolds is a really a good guy at that position. I think JoJo Natson, yes, at receiver. I think JoJo Natson will be another guy who can provide that and when you've got Chucky e. Keaton yeah. he can provide it with the arm and can run it yeah Travis Reynolds and Travis Van Leeuwen are your two main receivers coming back with experience two touchdowns between those guys so somebody's <laughs> gonna have to step up all right Al that's the offense when we come back we're gonna talk more about the defense get okay. your thoughts on uh, if they can have an encore of oh. a great season a year ago defense is still loaded <laughs> All right, welcome back to the Sports Week College Football Preview Show, all about the Utah State Aggies today. We've talked about the offense now for the defense, Jeremiah. Uh, the defense for Utah State will be hard pressed going into the Mountain West Conference to put up the same kind of huge numbers they did a year ago. They definitely will. That's why they got that new weight room facility. Yeah, bulk up a little bit. They're going to need it. The Utah <laughs> State defense gave up just 15 points per game last season. That will be tough to repeat against a much more difficult schedule, but this group of returning starters embraces the challenge. This one is blocked. 
want our guys to be is we'll always be blue collar. We'll always play with the chip on our shoulder. Light is passed, picked off by Fackrell. And we'll always be a group, I believe, that's intense um, and intentional about the work. But yeah, we're going to have fun and we're going to put a smile on our face and fly around and have fun. There is a play action again by Manley. He's pressured, sacks! The Utah State defense finished 14th in the country in total defense, 7th in scoring defense, and 6th in sacks in 2012. With seven starters returning, expectations are for that kind of success to continue. Are you confident that that group can maintain the intensity and the success that they've had in the last couple of years? Yeah, I am. Uh, I think uh, when you look at uh, who's coming back, they've played a lot of games. Um, there was a lot of starts between them, especially that linebacking core. Um, I don't have any doubts about their ability to lead and their ability to perform. Um, it'll be a fun group to watch. We're running the same type of program, you know. Losing Coach A was hard, but having Coach Wells be the guy that stepped in and, and fill that spot, that was huge for us as a team because, you know, when you have a coaching change, you don't know what's going to happen, what schemes are going to change, but Coach Wells did a good job of the new defensive guys that have come in. They had to learn our scheme. They have to learn how, how we do things. So terminology and all that stuff, virtually the same. Same type of program, you know, same core values. Key returners like first-team preseason all-conference linebacker Kyler Fackrell, Connor Williams, Jake Dowdy, Zach Vigil, and Nevin Lawson will face some of the best quarterbacks in the country, like Fresno State's Derek Carr and San Jose State's David Fales. Like you said, we had a good defense last year. That was last year, though. So this year, we got to step up our level of play. We have to watch that much more film on these guys because these guys are good. A lot of these guys are going to have a shot to go to the NFL. So that's some really good talent that we're going to have to stop. And that means, you know, if these guys are going to the NFL, they're really smart players. We have to be smarter than them to beat them. The defense will be tested early. Road games at Utah, Air Force, USC, and San Jose State, as well as home games against BYU and Boise State, all in the first seven weeks of the season. It's going to be tough. It's going to be a grind. But uh, I look forward to, like I said, the rising competition. That's awesome. You know, that's why that's why we do what we do. We we like we like to compete. So. Walk, walking down there open against Utah, it's going to be exciting. You know, I have a lot of respect for them guys, and obviously they want to beat us after last year, but uh, we're not little brother anymore. That is an intense group. Last year, the Aggie defense gave up just nine points in the first quarter and didn't allow a single first quarter touchdown for the entire season. The only team in the country to do so, Rod. All right, JJ, Al Lewis, radio voice of the Aggies, back with us. What about the defense this year? Great season a year ago, tougher schedule, your take, your sense, your feel for what they can do this year. I think the guys learned how to play defense last year, uh, even more to their capabilities. And, and again, the transition there is great. All the defensive staff stays except for Todd Orlando as the coordinator. And watching practice in the spring, it looked like the practices before. Orlando coaches differently than Dave Aranda does, but I think the results and what he wants to get done are the same. And I think, again, defense looks like it shouldn't miss a beat. Of course, it all starts with the linebackers. That's the leaders of this group. Zach Vigil, Kyler Fackrell, and Jake Dowdy. Uh, those guys, uh, if they can bring it again this year, which we expect they will, this is going to be solid. And you've got Tavares McMillan, and you've got Nick Vigil, and you've got some other guys in there that can do the job. Terrell Thompson, I think, will be another guy on there. Uh, so, again, linebacker is really going to lead this team. The place they really got better last year is the defensive front. And they rotated a lot of guys, and all of those guys are kind of back. I really think in, in uh, B.J. Larson and in uh, Jordan Nielsen and uh, some of these guys up front, and Connor Williams, really good, solid defensive front. Out of the three linebackers, Vigil, Fackerel, and, and Dowdy, is there one that kind of is the leader and the best out of this group, or, or do they just feed off each other? I How think, is well, that? Well, again, Dowdy and Vigil more inside. Fackrell's more the outside guy. Makes more of the uh, plays you might notice a little bit more in open space. And so I think maybe Fackrell you notice more, but the other guys are involved in a lot of plays in defense. All right, let's move back to the, D, uh, the DB's cornerback, Willie Davis, drafted by the Dolphins. He's gone. He was their playmaker a year ago. Have they got anybody 
to replace him and have that kind of speed? Well, they are adding a couple of new guys in the secondary that will go in, but I think the experience that's there is very good with Nevin Lawson especially and Rashad Stewart, and they're going to have to replace like McCade Brady at defensive sa safety, and that's where Maurice Alexander, I think, really we saw in spring. He was a guy who came as a linebacker a couple years ago for disciplinary reasons, was off the team last year, and now he's back playing safety. Big play guy. Yes or no? Jeremiah said it uh, moments ago, nine points in the first quarter. Are they going to be that studly again? Well, I think they think they can be, but <laughs> there's no way you can think you're going to go through a whole season and not give up a first quarter touchdown yeah. like they did last year. If that's, they do that's that. amazing. If they do that, we're in great shape. All right, Chris Peterson, call him a top 20 team. Yeah, we're still, do you agree we're, with that? We're still good. Okay. Al Lewis, thanks for coming in and uh, for making the trip from Logan. We've got a couple of gifts for you. Oh. Yeah, how about uh, Ruby River? Uh, you can go and take your lovely wife and have a meal on us. Oh, that's nice of you. And then also you got OGO. You got a golf bag. I know you, you golfed with, uh, well, with Coach, Coach Wells, Coach Wells today, today up at Logan Country yeah. Club. So uh, you can get a, a golf bag or travel bag in your travels. What kind of golfer is Coach Wells? Uh, I'll tell you what. I told you, a one iron. Can you imagine that, a guy hitting a one iron anymore? He really does. A one iron. He's good. So he's better than Gary yeah. Anderson, uh, at yeah. least on the, foot, I'm on sorry the to say golf course? Yes. I'm sorry to say yes. Although Coach Wells says if Gary would have put his time into it, that Matt grew up, his uh, grandpa was a golf pro. Okay. So he got a chance to play quite a bit with him. But he said if Gary would have played a little bit more, he could have got better. All right. Well, we started uh, this segment with you saying it's good to be Aggie Blue and you're loving it right now. Oh, yeah. Optimism, I mean, sky been looking, high. been looking forward for this for a long, long time. Is it higher than it was a year ago? Oh, yeah, because again, we had had a bowl team, but it was seven and five. Who would have expected 11 and two? Now again, they have something to, you know, to really try to live up to. And, and, and again, that's pretty high bar they have set. All right, Al Lewis, radio voice of the Aggies. Thank you, bud. Okay. We'll good be right back. You. Of course, we all know what uh, Chucky Keaton, the quarterback for the Aggies, can do. But now Utah State, since they're in the Mountain West, Jeremiah, they'll be watching a number of really, really good and also dangerous quarterbacks. Potential NFL guys. Here's a few of those quarterbacks talking about each other. Gotta get him. No, man, Lamelliota can't get him. Neither can Tui Loma. Keaton throws on the run. Touchdown! Every week, there's going to be a great quarterback. You got Derek, uh, Brett, Cody, Fajardo, Joe Southwick. Um, it's yeah, it's a definitely a great uh, group of quarterbacks. Ajardo, Aurora, looking in zone for Sutfeld, and he's got him for the touchdown. There's so many different kinds of quarterbacks. You got Chucky who can run and throw, and there's a couple of those, and you got me and David who don't really run as much. But you know we're pocket passers, and we'll try and pick you apart that way. But you know it, it's fun. You know it, it, it's I, I feel bad for the defense coordinators. <laughs> you know well, you got all these veteran quarterbacks to go up against. Receivers either side. Play clock at two. Snap to fails. Settles. Throws. Cut into the end zone. Touchdown, Chandler Jones. It is a good league. Uh, you know, Joe Southwick to, to David Fails to, to Cody to to uh, Derek, all those guys, uh, Taylor at Hawaii, all of those guys are um, very good players in and of their own selves. Rolls and throws, got a man, touchdown! But I like Chucky Keaton. I like what he does. I like his mindset, um, tremendous ability, but he is just a, uh, uh, a great kid to coach. His ability to retain knowledge, like I told you before. Um, He's got a lot of special qualities about him, and he's a great leader. He's a great teammate. Yeah, Aggie D coordinator Todd Orlando will have his hands full every yes. single week, but Chucky Keaton, he's got to be named right there with those guys as well, the top one, two, and three QBs in the conference. He is right up there with those guys based on what he's accomplished. The question is, can Chucky do it in the Mountain West Conference against this kind of schedule to see if he measured up with, with a guy like Derek Carr, who is the preseason Offensive yeah. player of the year and David Fails is being talked about as a potential first round NFL draft pick next year. Talented if you're wondering, Derek Carr, Fredno, the younger brother of former Fredno Bulldogs. That is true. David Carr. And he's very good. Is he better than his brother? He might be. Okay. His brother didn't do so well in the NFL, was a terrific right. college quarterback. We'll see what Derek does in the NFL. All right, we still have more Aggie talk when we come back. Helmet to helmet can be called right there, but that but is getting rocked. Oh, yeah, one final look at the Aggies. They pump up the 2013 season in their new conference. That's when we come back. Okay, uh, we are five weeks before the Aggies roll into Rice Eccles, start things up with the Utes. That's just the beginning, Jeremiah, of a very difficult yes. schedule. Utah State's first season in the Mountain West. But the Aggies feel they have the pieces in place to keep the momentum moving from last season full steam ahead.
Okay, five weeks away before we begin the journey for the Aggies trying to uh, improve or trying to respond after their record-breaking season a year ago. Should be a lot of fun to watch. Yeah, I think that Boise State game is the key game of the year. If they beat Boise State at home, they got a chance to win that division. And that is the week after the BYU game in Logan. Yes. All right, we'll see you tonight. Sports Beat, 1030.